that didn't have to do with Russia that a whistleblower source had given him. Now, the other reporting that I'm hearing today is actually that the sources that you describe in your paper are not accurate. And while I'm not going to comment on either, I think there is an assumption that everything and the chronology that went over is accurate, which I don't believe from further reporting that it is. And I also believe that some of the comments that have come out publicly in terms of some of the Obama administration are conveniently left out of that discussion. I think that that is interesting how no one seems to really cover the fact that in a senior Obama administration with high-level clearances talked about the spreading of classified information for political purposes and no one seems to care. But just to be clear, Mr. Priebus, Mr. Kushner, Mr. Bannon did not have knowledge of his uh, of his being on the campus having this interaction with I don't I don't know. Again, you're at you asked two questions and you melded them together. No one knew that he was coming to speak to the president. He announced that on television during a press conference. Sean, yeah, um, my understanding is that Dr. Farkas left the administration in 2015. Um, so okay. why is what she said in 2017 relevant to something that allegedly happened in 2016? I, the question I would have for you is exactly why is it? What is she, she says in her things? I'm urging my colleagues. I'm urging it to get the hill. But it's odd that the presumption seems to be why is it interesting? Have you asked her? No, you're the no, one you who haven't. Gets to so I, I, right she now. no no. But she's been on television talking about what she's done, and you seem to have made no. I don't believe everything I see on TV. <laughs> well, neither do I. But but I also do, I would assume that as a reporter that actually is interested in this story, a senior Obama administration official that handled Russia, Former. that Former. Uh, thank, yeah, well, all Obama administration officials generally. Are, there I, thank you. I appreciate the timeline, but I'm, I'm well aware of when it was. But my point is, is you seem to be rushing to her defense. At some point, she came on, she went on television and talked about actions that she and her colleagues took to spread classified information. And instead of, Jonathan, instead of defending her, it might be worth asking her what she's talking about, who she spread it to, why she did it, was it appropriate, who cleared her to do it. Maybe those are questions that can ask instead of asking me to defend why a former Obama administration official is revealing stuff that should be extremely concerning. What's so I'm going to go other, back to Tamara. What, yeah, one other question, which is, are you more concerned about that or Russian interference in the presidential election? Well, I, I think that there, if I'm, as an American citizen, I'm very concerned about the fact that people potentially were sharing information about other Americans for political purposes and using um, classified information to do so and leaking it. That should be concerning to everybody. I mean, the Russian interference no, that's not what I said. Please stop trying to, uh, it's not, no. It's which is worse. Uh, no, and, and, I, and I guess I don't, I mean, the answer is, I think if someone's interfering with our election, that's not good. I don't think that someone revealing and leaking classified information is good either. I'm not sure that you should have to choose. I think that you can have outrage and concern for both. And I don't think we should have to pick as an American whether or not which freedom we want to, to have undermined. I think we should expect both of them. And so the idea that that we should have to choose whether or not we want someone to interfere with our election or protect our civil liberties isn't one that we should want or that we should have questioned. Alexis.